Hey guys, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to MBBS Twitter channel. Today we are going to read about the next examination in ENT after otoscopy that is anterior rhinoscopy method of examination. In this video, we are going to discuss that what is that anterior rhinoscopy method and what are the materials required in this procedure and what is procedure for performing the examination and finally the observation that we are going to see through the instruments. Okay, so let's start our today's video. So friends, in this video, we are going to discuss uh, the next examination in ENT performed after otoscopy, that is anterior rhinoscopy method. In this method, we are going to observe or it's a clinical procedure for examination of nasal cavities. And in this procedure, we are going to find the different kinds of pathological changes inside the nasal cavities. So it's a clinical examination of nasal cavity. What are we going to see in that? There could be like nasal secretions or swelling of nasal turbinates. As we know, there are three nasal turbinates and it could be there could be any kind of inflammations present inside and due to inflammations, whether there can be any kind of secretions, whether watery secretion or pus secretion. So we can identify all those through this anterior rhinoscopy method. Then we can check the properties of mucosal surface inside the nasal cavity and we can compare between the two nasal cavities. The position of nasal septum, whether there is any kind of deviation of nasal septum also can be found out through this method. Whether there can be hematoma or polyps, nasal deformities, ulcerations, so all the pathologies can also be identified through this anterior rhinoscopic method. If the pathology is related to the anterior part of nasal cavity, then only we can find out through this procedure. If there will be pathology present behind or in the posterior part of nasal cavity, then we will require the process or we will require the examination that is known as posterior rhinoscopy. We are going to discuss after uh, one more video. Next, we are going to see about the materials requirement. For the materials requirement in this process, we require two important instruments. That could be nasal speculum and it could be thuticum speculum. I have written or it means either of them we can use. So, I have two instruments that this one is the nasal speculum which I am holding and this uh, this is the thuticum speculum that I am that I have made with paper. Okay, so I am going to explain that uh, how these instruments are going to be used. So moving towards the next section is the procedure for this examination method. First of all, as uh, we had performed the otoscopic examination and before that the doctor had also seen the general observation or the visual examination or whether there can be any kind of changes uh, in the visual examination of the patient. So that should be noted first. Then moving for this anterior rhinoscopy method, it can be performed in two, two ways as in case of children. As in case of children, there is no requirement for using the materials or instrument. Why? Because uh, tilting the nose upward direction will be enough for having the rhinoscopic view or anterior rhinoscopic view. But in case of adults, we have to use either of these instruments for performing the examination. So that is the first uh, point that you should remember. Next comes the instrument should be held in left hand such as the blade points the patient. As in case of otoscopy for the uh, right ear affected patient we have to hold the otoscope in right hand and for left uh, ear affected patient we have to hold the otoscope in left hand and this all is for a right handed observer. Okay. But in case of this anterior rhinoscopy method, you should remember that it is always the instrument is always held in left hand and the process of holding the uh, instrument is in this manner such that the blades, the anterior blades will be facing towards the patient so that after inserting, we can have a wider view. Okay. So next 
procedure we have to learn that how this instrument is need to be inserted into the nasal cavities so first of all the nasal speculum this is the nasal speculum you can see this is the two uh, arm or curved arms with two flat blades and this is the thoracic speculum as i have prepared uh, with the paper but here you can assume that it has a inverted u shaped structure okay it has a inverted u shaped structure and with two flat blades this are the two flat blades so what are how we are going to hold this instrument and how we are going to observe through this instrument for thoracic speculum the index finger is in, introduced inside the loop concavity and the two blades and the two blades are controlled by middle and ring finger and the thumb placed for stabilizing so what he says that if this is the thoracic speculum and we have to hold through this index finger and thumb for stabilization and it will the two flat blades will be controlled by the middle finger and the ring finger okay and for that uh, in case of the nasal speculum we all need to put or uh, insert this instrument while the instruments are in a closed manner closed manner means when the two blades are brought together it is obvious that the uh, for inserting the instrument we need to close it okay uh for inserting the instrument we need to close the two flat blades and then we have to insert and then we have to open it so that's what saying the procedure next process is that for all speculum the two uh the two flat blades are brought together and inserted into the vestibule of the nose in two angles so the insertion process also applies with two angles what are these angles first of all if this is the nasal cavities and okay just uh, think that this is the nasal cavity and this is the floor of nasal cavity if we are going to insert in this instrument then first of all we are going to insert in the long axis of nose okay so first of all along the long axis of nares okay we have to put it and then when inside when the instrument is inside the vestibule then the speculum is brought up in the vertical direction after putting we have to open it and we have to brought up in the vertical direction so that we can have a view in this manner okay if this is the eye we can have the view in this manner so uh, this is the requirement for inserting the instrument so after insertion the position of head also matter in this examination method so what will be the position of head during the examination point of view we can have two position or two tilting position of head first of all the two tilting position first it can be the mandible will be parallel with the floor when the mandible is parallel to the floor we have to check the uh, view inside the nasal cavity or we can also the see if the mandible is at a 45 degree to the floor if this is the mandible and this is the floor this is the first case in which it is parallel and if the mandible will be in this way and this is the floor it will be in a 45 direction okay so it is, i am saying about the position of head so here comes the important question about this method that what should be the two position of head and what should be the two uh, angles in which the blades can be inserted and uh, how the thoracic speculum is held and uh, the instrument should be held in left hand so finally we are going to move towards the observation what are we going to see in this observation as we are going to see the nasal cavity in a uh, triangular manner so the observation will also be in a similar process okay so what are we going to see through this observation we are going to first of all the inferior nasal turbinate this red sign uh, represents the inferior nasal turbinate or turbinate means the concave then we can see the middle nasal turbinate but 
in the anterior rhinoscopy method we cannot see the superior nasal turbinate you have to remember this we can see the inferior and middle only then we can also check for nasal septum as i have said we can see if there will be any kind of deviation inside it or not we can also see the floor of nasal cavity we can see the inferior nasal meatus meatus is the space uh, under the turbinate so if this will be inferior nasal turbinate so under it it will be having the inferior nasal meatus so uh, under the second or the middle nasal turbinate we will be having the middle nasal meatus so this So this was all about anterior rhinoscopy method of examination. Uh, I hope you all like my video. So if you do feel that you understood something, please do like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you so much for watching my videos.